Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontrar la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arroz en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to this episode, the very first episode of the Proto Vallarta Travel Show. I am your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination in the entire world. Maybe it's yours. I hope maybe one day it will be yours if it's not already, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're listening to right now is performed by Alberto Perez. And Alberto Perez is the owner of the Lapa Lapa group of restaurants. Lapa Lapa and the El Dorado restaurant are both on the south side of town, right down in the beach, on the beach, in Puerto Vallarta. And for those of you who are looking for a little romance under the stars, the El Dorado restaurant has this really romantic dining experience. It's a package, and you call ahead and arrange it, and you follow this candlelit path through the sand to your table, which is also got candles on top too, candlelit too, and then surrounded by tiki torches. You get in the picture, we got lots of fire going on here. We're talking about the fire of love. We're talking about Puerto Vallarta, you guys. So romantic. Five-course gourmet, gourmet meal, created especially for you and served right there, toes in the sand, right at the water's edge. You can have that if you come to Puerto Vallarta and if you go to the El Dorado. So let me tell you a little bit about about this show. My name is Barry Kessler, and I've been going to Puerto Vallarta to vacation with my wife for over 30 years now. And I think, well, I know it's the most romantic place on the planet. And that's why I want to introduce this romantic, amazing place to all of you. The art, the food, the beauty, the unforgettable sunsets, the charm of the old town, and just the wonderful people of Puerto Vallarta. Those are the things that keep me coming back. And my aim isn't just to entice the newcomer and to let them get the feeling for the place, but it's also to talk to you more frequent travelers, you people who have been to Puerto Vallarta maybe once or twice, and maybe give you the initiative and the incentive to try something different, to stretch your horizons, you know, to, you know, basically make your time off a little bit more exciting here in paradise. Now, this is going to be an interactive show, and I, I'm going to invite you, my guests, my listeners, to be my guests. And I want your thoughts, I want your opinions on all things Puerto Vallarta, including Well, all the places along the Bahia de Banderas, from Sayulita to the north, all the way to Cabo Corrientes in the south. And I've lined up interviews with the movers and the shakers in this town, from restaurateurs to resort owners and hotel owners, and and I'm going to interview local artists and local authors and personalities here in Puerto Vallarta. We're going to talk to real estate agents and wedding planners and tour operators and expats, artists, again, shop owners, you name it. So the first shows, we're going to concentrate on the basics. We're going to talk about the the lay of the land, the geography, the local customs, and what are the best months of the year to visit. And we're going to talk about getting there. Are Are you going to be driving there? Are you flying there? Believe it or not, people do drive there. Are you going to fly? Are you you just stopping for a day on a cruise ship? Maybe you just have a couple hours and you need to get the feel for Puerto Vallarta. Well, this show is going to be for you too because we're going to get you ready to take advantage of everything that Puerto Vallarta has to offer when you get off that boat. Well, I know you guys call it a ship. 
it's not a boat. So we're going to be talking about passports and the papers that you need to bring, uh, the length of stay, what to expect when you arrive at the airport. And believe it or not, you need to know what to expect when you arrive at this airport. So listen up. Now, can you bring your pet? How about groceries and shopping for the basics? Can I get what I want at maybe a supermarket? Are, are there 7-Elevens, convenience stores and stuff? Well, I'm going to tell you, yes, there are convenience stores, there are supermarkets. In fact, you will be surprised at the comforts of home that you will find here in Puerto Vallarta. You will be stunned. So, we'll be talking about exchanging money. That's very important. Can you drink the water? Is it okay to eat the food? Is the ice okay in the margarita or in my Coca-Cola? Well, what about crime? Is Puerto Vallarta safe? Can you walk the streets at night? And how about the police? Can you trust the police? And what are the people like? Can you trust the people? And how about bugs? Mosquitoes? How do we prepare for that kind of thing? And then there's transportation once we arrive. How do we get around? Should you rent a car? And then what should you do before you get into a taxi or get on a bus? Now, I know what you're thinking, you guys. You're thinking, Barry, what are you talking about? Uh, we're in Mexico. I'm, I'm going to get kidnapped. What do you mean, get on a bus? You mean like a, a chicken bus? Well, we're going to be talking about that, too. We're going to be talking about all of that stuff and more in the first couple of podcasts. So we're going to cover the basics. We're going to get you prepared because I want you to have the safest and most awesome vacation that you have ever had. And you're going to have it right here, right here in Puerto Vallarta. I'm going to help you plan your vacation so you can optimize your valuable, hard-earned time off. And my aim is truly to help you enjoy everything that Puerto Vallarta has to offer so that you can get your mind off that daily grind, okay? Deal? Deal. So, why am I doing this show? I would say that my inspiration comes from a person I met on a website. Now, I'm not talking about some internet dating site, you guys. I'm talking about a very famous travel-related website. Now, when I would be planning my trips to Puerto Vallarta, I would go to this travel forum, and whenever I or someone else asked a question about a certain Vallarta-related subject, invariably this guy, J.R. in PV was his name, He'd be giving answers to the questions. Well, I had to meet this guy in person. I just, I wanted to go there and I wanted to thank him for all the guidance that he'd given me over the years. And while we were talking, sitting, shooting the breeze over at a local drinkery, I got to thinking that this guy really needs to be on the air. I mean, this dude's not, okay, I said dude, I'm from Southern California. I say dude a lot, okay? No disrespect, okay, JR? Anyway, this dude's knowledge needs to be shared with the world. And on top of that, he has such a great accent. He really does. It's, he, he belongs on the radio. So, anyway, his name is John, and he's best known as, like I said before, JR in PV. And JR has lived in Puerto Vallarta for 40 years. And for 30 of those, he's been here permanently. So, for almost 30 years, he's been giving advice to travelers coming to and from this fair city. So, JR has promised me that he's going to join me on a weekly basis, and he's going to answer your questions. He's going to tell us about what's happening during the week in Puerto Vallarta, and it's going to be great. Now, he's an expat from London, and as you're going to see, he still hasn't picked up the local accent. Anyway, JR, he has his website. You can see it by going to www.vallartainfo.com. And on the website, at the top of the page, is a tab called Maps. And you can download the maps, and you can print them out if you want before you come to PV, and it's probably a good idea to do so. But the maps show the different sections of Puerto Vallarta. They're nicely detailed, and they show where the bus stops are. They have the different points of interest all marked there clearly. And restaurants are marked 
clearly as well. And, well, I'm going to be referring to these maps as you and I make this journey through the city in the upcoming episodes of the show. JR also has, in addition to lots of invaluable information there, he has um, a tour tab on the top of his homepage. And if you're going to take a tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, make sure you book your tour through that website at vallartainfo.com. Remember that this is a value-for-value value proposition here. JR gives us great travel information, and we help him out by reserving our tours through vallartainfo.com. And speaking of JR, let's see what he has to say about the all-important question, can you drink the water in Puerto Vallarta? So today we are joined by, uh, as of a promised, JR in PV. And JR, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you, Barry. Fantastic. I have a question for you from my audience, and I'm sure that everybody wants to know about the situation about water in Puerto Vallarta. Can you drink the water in Puerto Vallarta, John? In Puerto Vallarta, you can drink the water that comes out the faucet. Um, this is not true in other parts of Mexico, but uh, Puerto Vallarta is somewhat unique in this respect. Um, the the company that uh, produces the Agua Porta, Portable um, is that correct? Potable? Mm, uh, potable water, I guess. I guess I, potable, I think, uh, is correct. Potable, potable, um, is Siapal. They have been producing the water here in Puerto Vallarta and passing all the international standards on quality for more than 15 years. Um, this is very unique in Mexico. This is not true outside of Puerto Vallarta. In other words, outside the municipal area of Puerto Vallarta, uh, I would drink bottled water. Right. So when you say out of the municipal area in Puerto Vallarta, because Puerto Vallarta, um, you know, people look at that and they say, well, that's people think it's Busarias is part of Puerto Vallarta, yeah. Punta Mita is part they, of Puerto Vallarta, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they confuse PVR, the airport, with Puerto Vallarta. PVR, the airport, is the airport. Um, it happens to lie uh, on the extreme north end of Puerto Vallarta itself, the municipality. In fact, it is just a short distance away from the next state, which is Nayarit. We are in Jalisco. Um, Nayarit is where you will find Busarias and Nueva Vallada, but that is not Puerto Vallada. Puerto Vallada, the municipality, stretches from the Ameca River, uh, which is just north of the airport, um, all the way south to, I believe it includes Conchas Chinas, and inland to Pitial. Ah, very good. So, uh, the the Ameca River is the border, right, between Jalisco and um, Nayarit, right? That that is correct. Yes. Ah, fantastic. Okay, so once again, if you are north of the airport, chances are you're drinking bottled water. If you are in Puerto Vallarta, which is south of the airport, all the way to Conchas Chinas, then you are pretty good. You can actually drink out of the sink. Really, you can drink out of the sink. Well, yes, I mean, I've been doing it, for, I don't know, probably about 12 years now. Um, it, I, I mean, okay, you can drink the water out of the faucet with the caveat that sometimes you might get a little bit upset, not to the extent of Montezuma's revenge, uh -huh. but, but every, everybody's water is a little different from everybody else's. Um, I know many, many cases of uh, Mexican nationals traveling to the United States and getting sick on the water up there. Not because it's bad, it's just different. Right, and their systems aren't used to it, and our systems might not be used to certain certain things that are in the local water as well, which is, you know, which which could cause a little caution, I think, to some people. Yes, but you're not going to get deathly sick drinking the water out of the faucet in Puerto Vallarta. Um, in Nayarit... <laughs> the, 
that kind of leads to another question, which is, I see people all around town drinking uh, bottled water, and I see whenever I land in a hotel or if I go to an apartment or any of these places, they all, for some reason, they all have bottled water for us. They have it, and you know, sitting in those five-gallon jugs and waiting to be consumed. You think that's filtered water? You think that's from the sink? Um, I, I'm. It's probably purified water. Um, the five-gallon jugs are called garrafons here, mm-hmm. and the biggest customers are actually the locals who have um, never gotten used to the idea that they could drink water out of the faucet. Yeah, they maybe um, they never never maybe got around to trusting the idea, huh? Right. This is why they don't vote in elections as well. <laughs> Interesting. No, they just, but they're, they don't they're, trust it. you know they're so used to the old way, and they are resistant to change, and so they 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 are the biggest customers for the Garofans of water. Wow, that is that's interesting. Um, of course, we walk around here in the United States, and we and and in Canada, I'm sure too, and walking around with bottled water everywhere we go, even though we can drink out of our own sink too. We've been told we can't, right? We've been told it's not good. It's a sure way to tell somebody is a tourist here if they've got a bottle of water in their hand. There you go. Okay, if you don't want to look like a tourist, you just heard it from JR right there. Where where are these water purification plants in, in the city? Oh, oh, the Siapal plants. Yes. Um, oh, there's various pumping stations. They all are uh, uh, mostly located by the Rio Quali in town. Um, that's why... When I go to a restaurant and I want some water and I don't want to buy or pay for water, I say un vaso de agua de Rio Quali. In other <laughs> words, a glass of water from the uh, from the river. <laughs> Anyhow, and the the pumping stations there's there's one in Gringo. Uh, let me see, there's one in Gringo, Gringo Gulch. Uh, uh, there's one in Ramance. There's another one in in Buenos Aires. Big one there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you we can drove see past that. that, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're, and they're basically pumping the water out of the out of the river, and uh, filtering it and uh, and treating it. Um, they also inject chlorine, um, so it's quite safe. Fantastic, and I'm sure that that is something that is really um, needed in a rest in a restaurant town like Puerto Vallarta, where there's 700 plus restaurants there. Uh, you know, you, you want to make sure that there's good water coming into those places. All right. Well, there you go um, to my fellow listeners out there. And that that answers the question about water in Puerto Vallarta. So you you can drink it if you hop in if you hop in the shower and uh, and it happens to get in your mouth. You shouldn't worry too much about it. Right. JR? right. Brush, brush your teeth in it. No problem. Fantastic. All right. Well, there you go. John, JR, thank you so, so much for joining us on this episode. I appreciate your 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 wisdom and um, all the great tips that you have given all of our listeners. And we look forward to uh, hearing from you again next show. Okay. And I hope everybody comes and visits our wonderful, lovely town. Absolutely. Thank you, John. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow. Well, thanks, JR. That was an in-depth look into what's going on with the water in Puerto Vallarta. But let me stop here and just add another caveat. Just because I or JR say that it's okay to drink out of a faucet in Puerto Vallarta, at least in Puerto Vallarta proper, I don't. And I don't expect you to do it either. But here's the thing. Isn't it nice to know that the water that your veggies and your food are being washed in right there in Puerto Vallarta is clean water. Now that's a big deal to me and it should be to you too. And as well as brushing your teeth, if you make a slip, hey, you're not going to get sick. And if you're in the shower and you take a mouthful of water, look, if you're in Puerto Vallarta proper, you are not going to get sick. That's a good thing. Now just remember though, if you're above the Ameca River, in Nueva Vallarta, for example, to the north, or south of Conscious Chinas, like he said, drink bottled water by all means. So, thank you, JR, for that water lesson. So now let's, let's continue. 
the next couple of episodes, we're going to be talking about the history of Vallarta. We're going to we're going to have lessons, the basic travel do's and don'ts, and then what? Well, as you may or may not have heard, Puerto Vallarta is an incredible foodie destination. There's over 700 restaurants here, really. So we're going to be interviewing numerous restaurant tours here, and we're going to get their stories. We're going to hear about their menus, their awards, their struggles with working in a town with so much competition for the tourist dollar. And I'm going to be interviewing Gary Beck, who is the author of the Puerto Vallarta Food Guide. And he also writes for the Banderas News. He covers the entertainment beat as well. So Gary is going to be talking food, and you guessed it, we're going to be talking entertainment with him as well. So food and restaurants, those are going to be a big part of this show. We're going to be discussing a wide range of hotel, resort, Airbnb, condo, homes, and, and even luxury estates that can be rented here. And listen, are you on a budget? That's not a problem because Puerto Vallarta has plenty of opportunities for the budget traveler. And you can find some of those deals in places like like Priceline and TripAdvisor and Travelocity and, well, you know the sites. But you really don't need those sites because I'm going to help you pinpoint the great deals out there. And we're going to talk with the hotel owners and the operators on this show. So stay tuned for that. Now, maybe you're a luxury traveler. traveler. Maybe uh, your idea of a perfect vacation is being pampered, right? Maybe you don't want to leave the property at all. Perhaps you're all about the all-inclusive experience. You know, you think that you're in dangerous Mexico, so you get picked up at the airport by some guy with a card with your name on it. He drives you to to your hotel. <clears throat> Senor, senora, welcome to the hotel in Puerto Vallarta. I will return in a week. Goodbye. And then off he goes. And then there you are. You, you, you disappear into this hotel and you never come out. Right? There you are. You, 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 uh, you get everything included. You got the, the food, the booze, everything in the same place. Even, even the tips included sometimes. So for many of you, I suppose that lounging around Reading, being pampered, and all that other good stuff, getting poolside and oceanside massage treatments, having the staff know you by name, you know, having having a private beach with with the beachside service, they bring you the umbrella drinks and so forth. Maybe this is an important part of a vacation experience for you. Now, not for me, I'm just saying, but listen, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to learn from all of you fellow travelers, and whatever way, whatever floats your boat, that's cool. Maybe I'm missing something. I Listen, I'm willing to be proven wrong, and I'm going to keep an open mind during our travels together. So here's one thing, though. I really would like to see some of you, some of you all-inclusive travelers, get out once or twice during your experience and, and just see what Puerto Vallarta has to offer. So that's kind of what this show's about. So here in Vallarta, you can find the real budget digs that will cost you Eh, around twenty or forty dollars a night, U.S. Uh, those are places like, well, Airbnbs. Some of the Mexican hotels. We're going to point those out. We're going to send you. We're, we're going to talk to those people, and we'll we'll walk through those hotels together. Then, of course, there on the other side of the spectrum, there's the Four Seasons Punta Mita, and that place. Sit down. Are you sitting? That'll that'll set you back fifteen hundred dollars a night. Um, have you ever been to a $1,500 a night hotel? I haven't. But if you have, in Puerto Vallarta, I want to talk to you. Let me know how you liked it. Let me know about your experience. And let me just say that coming from Southern California, that $1,500 is about what I spend for airfare and hotel and food when I go to Puerto Vallarta. And if you do live in Southern California area or around here, I'll show you how to do that. Anyway, Airbnbs have made it really, really big here. And there's apartments and condos for rent too. Uh, there are specialists who help you find places if you need an extended stay, for example. So anyway, what I'm getting at, there's just lots of properties all along the Bahia de Banderas 
that'll suit any traveler's needs. So we're going to we're going to visit these places, we're going to talk about them, we're going to talk to the hotel operators, we're going to talk to you, the everyday traveler, and we're going to get your first-hand experiences. This is going to be fun. It's going to be an interactive show. It's going to be an interactive experience. So then we're going to talk about what first-timers shouldn't miss, like tours, for example. Uh, we're going to talk about the fact that, well, that this is a seaside destination. There's all sorts of water sports. There's romantic, secluded, beautiful beaches where you can sit under a palapa umbrella and then have food and drinks served to you. You can hire a panga to take you out to that secluded beach. There's fishing, there's scuba diving, there's there's snorkeling, there's parasailing, there's sailing, uh, sailboat excursions, actually, that come out of the Marina Vallarta. And from Bucerias, you can catch a boat to the Marietta Islands. So we're going to tell you all about the greatest places to go, and we're going to tell you about what not to miss, or listen, if you just want to lounge around and relax, you can just hear about what you're missing. and Just pretend that you don't care. Anyway, remember, this is a sharing podcast. I won't bag on you guys too much. Now, if you're an adventure traveler and you like to hike, if you like to zip line and do healthy, invigorating stuff, well, Puerto Vallarta has got you covered. We're going to talk about you guys, too. And perhaps, well, perhaps you're the kind of traveler who who isn't happy unless you're helping other people. Maybe you just feel guilty enjoying yourself while other people are suffering. You know who you are. You're do-gooders. Well, you do-gooders are in luck because Puerto Vallarta has lots of opportunities for you to do just so much good. Uh, Maybe you want to help out at one of the many children's charities that are set up in Vallarta. Maybe you don't like kids. So maybe you want to help out at the local ASPCA where you can help out animals or that local pet and spay clinic. Well, there's an entire list of these organizations where your help and your funds are really needed and they'd be appreciated, of course. And I have basically added a couple of those to my website. Those are in my links page and they will be links to do-gooder websites here in Puerto Vallarta that you can visit. And again, you're going to find those links by going to www.pertovallartatravelshow.com. Well, we're also going to be interviewing the leaders and those volunteers who have found their calling and are helping basically run these individual charities. Now, my real job is selling homes. I know a lot about selling houses in Southern California, and that's why I can afford to make Puerto Vallarta, my second home away from home. In fact, I do another podcast called the Southern California Real Estate Answer Man Show, and I do tutorials on buying and selling real estate in California. So if you ever want to buy some Malibu or Huntington Beach Oceanside property, or if you want to sell a home or buy a home anywhere in Southern California, you you call me. But I have absolutely no idea where to begin when it comes to buying and selling beachfront or oceanside property in Mexico. Now, I do, however, know some really great agents, and they work all along the Bahia de Banderas, from Sayulita all the way down to Boca de Tamatlan in the south. So, if you're ever in the market to buy a piece of paradise, email me, and I'll introduce you to an agent that suits your personality, someone who's honest and who will walk you through the process, without being pushy. Someone that you'll get along with and someone that you can trust. So you can email me just by going to my contact us tab at the top of the page and just sending me your info would be just great. I'll give you a call and we'll get a feel for the type of agent that'll suit you best. We'll find out what kind of personality you have and we'll hook you guys up. Anyway, my natural interest, of course, is buying and selling homes. So we're going to talk with realtors and brokers and attorneys about foreigners buying property in Puerto Vallarta. Now we're talking about real property here, not timeshares. We're going to be talking about buying the whole enchilada, about buying a home or a condo, you know. Now it's not going to be a big part of the show, but 
we are going to definitely touch on the subject. Well, maybe more than a touch, maybe uh, just a little heavy petting. We'll see. Look, I think that people who come down here more than once start looking around and they start asking themselves, where would I live if I lived here? And listen, it's a certain, it's certainly a, a thought-provoking subject. So just for the voyeurism of the whole thing, just indulge me, this, this real estate agent turned podcaster, okay? So talking about timeshares, we're going to be talking timeshares in an episode or two. And that's because it just seems that everywhere you turn around in this town, including when you land at the airport, and believe me, well, once again, I'll tell you about that. Anyway, it seems like someone's always trying to be selling you a timeshare down here. So we're going to give you some helpful tips on how to best avoid them or to shake them off. And then, in fact, we'll spend some time discussing the good and the bad and the ugly of these timeshare opportunities with people who sell them people who hate them, and people who just love them. Now, some people out here have multiple timeshares, and we're going to hear from them too and see how they make it work. And if purchasing your little piece of paradise isn't in the cards for you, we'll be talking with people living in Puerto Vallarta who handle long-term and short-term rentals. There's just so many of you who are snowbirds. You're spending three, four, five months in paradise instead of battling the freezing temperatures and Places like Minnesota Cold or Cleveland, Ohio, or you Canadians up there in Canada, from Manitoba, from Toronto, Vancouver, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I just wanted to say Saskatoon. Anyway, all over that great country of the north, Canadians in Canada, okay, I won't say Canada, Canadians are finding that their dollarettes go a lot further in Puerto Vallarta than they do at home or even in the States. And that's why you find such a large Canadian expat population right here in Puerto Vallarta. For some reason, Canadians love this place. I mean, the first time I came here, I thought I was in Vancouver. Anyway, you're going to see lots of American expats living here as well. So we're going to be talking with expats right here in Puerto Vallarta, from one end of the bay to the other, to get their stories. And we're going to discuss their reasons for moving to paradise. (laughs) Can you believe it? Someone wanting to move to paradise? Anyway, we're going to talk about their challenges. We're going to talk about their successes at making a go, at living, at making a living here in Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. Now, perhaps you're considering Puerto Vallarta as your destination wedding location. There's many brides out there who see themselves getting married with the ocean right there, the fantastic setting of the Banderas Bay as the backdrop for that ideal wedding. And then there's others that see themselves married at that famous church of Our Lady de Guadalupe. You know, that beautiful crowned church that you see in all of those tourist photos? Yeah, that church. Did you know you could get married there? Well, you might want to be Catholic first, but, well, anyway. Maybe you decided to renew your vows in paradise, and you want to invite your friends, your favorite people in the whole world, to share your special moment with you. Well. We will be talking with local wedding planners and bakers and dressmakers and florists and photographers too, caterers and hotel operators, all of those people who get together and can make your wedding, your destination wedding, the talk of the town, and an incredible memory for you, all from far, far away. Pretty cool. We're going to find out how they do it. Now, if you've had a wedding, that you want to tell us about, please let me know and we can talk about it in an upcoming show. Let's hear about your experiences and please share them with our listeners. It'll be great. Now, maybe you're interested in the numerous art galleries throughout Puerto Vallarta. We're going to be talking with a number of local artists. Many of them are expats themselves. Now they call Puerto Vallarta their home. And I have an upcoming interview with Gary Thompson. He's the owner and director of Galleria Pacifico, and he's going to give us a tour of the local artwork on the Malacan. That's the oceanfront boardwalk right there in Old Town, Puerto Vallarta. That's um, where some of the most fantastic, well, I would say kind of unusual looking sculptures are. And they're so popular 
and they're here along the waterfront right here in Puerto Vallarta. So during the high season, every Tuesday morning at 9.30, Gary Thompson gives a free walking tour where he describes the artwork and the artists as well, and he starts at the north end of the Malacan and works his way down south. It'll be a real treat, and we're going to join him there. Now, maybe you're looking to enrich yourselves by taking a Spanish course or a cooking class so that you can cook like a local. Maybe you want to take an art class with a local artist. Well, we're going to be interviewing these teachers who are eager to share their knowledge so that you can bring home, well, part of Puerto Vallarta with you to share with family and friends. And you can relive those, relive those experiences each and every day. Now imagine learning from some of the most amazing chefs in the entire world. You can do that here. And you're going to be so glad that you listen to this show because now you got the bug. Now you're thinking about that, right? Puerto Vallarta was put on the map by Hollywood director John Huston and Richard Burton and Liz Taylor when The Night of the Iguana was filmed back in 1964. So it should come as no surprise that Puerto Vallarta has a robust theater and entertainment community right now. And we're going to be discussing that with Gary Beck in an upcoming show this February. You're going to discover that Puerto Vallarta is also very LGBTQ friendly. And there's lots of bars and clubs and theaters and even restaurants and lodgings that cater exclusively to the gay and queer community. Uh, There's even special tour groups that market exclusively to the gay market. So naturally, we're going to have a show or two dedicated to the gay travel in Puerto Vallarta. And I'm I'm sure that that's going to be really, really interesting. I'm looking forward to it. So there's just so much to talk about here. And as the show progresses week by week, I'm going to be working with a lot of friends like JR and my buddy Augustine over at the fantastic Hotel Cinco 22 B&B located on Calle Hidalgo. It's about three blocks north of the Church of Our Lady de Guadalupe. What a great place that is. We're gonna, I'm going to give you a tour of that place sometime soon. Anyway, we're going to be working with these great guys and other guys and girls to help bring you special offers from restaurants and hotels and resorts and clubs. So stay tuned for all of that. Just another added bonus for my listeners. I'm going to bring in those to you as they become available as the show progresses. And again, you're going to find all the show notes to this podcast and to others, including links to JR's site and to the website where you can purchase the fantastic music of Alberto Perez, who we're going to be listening to as we play out this episode. And remember, this show is an interactive show. I need your participation. I need you to send me emails with questions for JR that you would like to hear him answer on the air with me. And I'd also like you to send me your suggestions for show topics. I probably have about 60 of them written down, but if you think of something that I should be talking about, please reach out and let me know by going to my website at www.portofiartatravelshow.com. Go to the contact section there, drop it down, send me an email. And... If you're considering booking any type of a tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartainfo.com, JR's website, and reserve your tour through him, right from his website. Remember that this is a value-for-value proposition, my friends. His experience and his on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you'd do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thank you, JR, for being our guide. It's no more, no cost to you than if you were going to take it with anybody else. So really, just go ahead and do it. And when you take one of those tours, let me know about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked about it and maybe what you didn't like about it. Again, email me with your experiences by going to my contact page, and dropping that down and sending off an email. So next week, we're going to get right into how to prepare for and what to expect when you arrive in Puerto Vallarta for your dream vacation. Uh, One more thing, please. If you like this podcast, take the time and give me a good review on iTunes, please. It would be so appreciated. And, well, 
it would be a great way to get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta. So thank you for listening all the way through. This has been the very first episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Solo camino, pero por la playa, encuentro junto al río, cuando todo está en calma, pronto cae la noche, me brillas puerto vallarta, samba de puerto vallarta. Yeah, yeah.